Greetings everyone, this is non-expert here back again with another video. Today we are going to be solving problem number 67 and the difficulty it's been rated at is hard. This problem was asked by Google and let's just get down to it. So the problem description is that we want to implement an LFU cache. LFU stands for least frequently used um, and we've been given a few things that the cache size should be n and you have two methods that you need to implement. The first method is the set method, which takes in two parameters, the key and the value. And basically you need to set the key to the value. And if there are already n items in the cache, whenever you are adding a new item, basically you know for a fact that you cannot add that item because, well, the size which has been allocated to this cache is n. Um, so there's a case of overflow happening. So in order for you to handle that, you need to remove the least frequently used item. And that's the entire essence of how an LFU cache sort of works. And if there is a tie, then the least recently used key should be removed. Awesome. And the second method that you need to implement is a get method in which you pass in a parameter key and you need to return whatever value is you know, corresponding to the key value. And if no such key exists, you need to return null. The reason why this problem is so hard is because of the time complexity. So they've given us a limitation over here which is saying that each operation should run in O of 1 time. But fortunately, we don't have any restrictions on space. So we have the flexibility of designing our own data structure. And whenever somebody talks about caches, you should already think about a dictionary or a hash map scenario where you can sort of implement and move forward from there. Cool. So fortunately, we were able to find a similar problem on lead code, and the name of the problem is LFU cache. Um, you can check out the link given in the description below and try solving this problem on your own. They give us the same interface where they tell us to implement the same methods, the get method and the put method. And again, this, the reason why this thing is so hard is because of the time complexity. Um, but they're giving us an example over here which sort of gives us a better understanding of what's exactly going on. So let's say that you do two put operations. So you have one comma one and two comma two. When you do a get of one, well, it just returns one because you know you put in the key value pair of one comma one. So whenever you do get of one, well, you return one. But the size over here or the capacity of the cache is two. So you already know that due to these two put operations, it's already been filled up. So when you try to do another put, which is three comma three, it needs to remove the least frequently used item. So we already used one, but we haven't used two yet. So two is the least frequently used item, so that needs to be popped out. And then if you try to do a get of two, well, since it's already been popped out of the cache, it's not, I mean, it's going to return minus one or null or whatever, since three comma three took its place. Cool. So, <clears throat> I've already sort of talked about a similar problem in my videos, which is called the least recently used cache. And I've already talked about the data structures which we would be using. Um, and it's going to be pretty similar to that. So I'm going to assume that you've already, you know, watched that video. If you've not, I would sort of urge you to do that because an LRU, LRU cache is actually used a lot. Uh, but again, the two data structures which which are most prominent over here are, is going to be the default dictionary and the order dictionary. So let's just import those things. Let's do default dictionary and the order dictionary. Pretty straightforward. The reason why we take an order dictionary in the LRU cache video, I sort of explained this as well, but if you sort of think about it, whenever you have a dictionary, whenever you do an insert inside of it, the hash map, to, whenever it sort of gets hashed out, that's no longer like maintaining the order in which you sort of placed in your items. So if you sort of insert a lot of things inside your dictionary, if you try to get the first item, it might not be the first item which you, which you sort of inserted. So sort it of depends on the hashing strategy, but that's the reason why we want to implement an order dictionary. And internally, an order dictionary uses a doubly linked list with a hash map which sort of pointing to all the values. So since Python is sort of going to handle this thing for us, we're not going to worry about it. Um, and one other thing which I want to do, I feel like this is one of the best practices, is that if you feel like there's a lot of data which is sort of coming inside, um, and you know for a fact that the object which you have is going to like contain, a, it needs to contain a lot of information, 
One of the best approaches would be just that you just create a class out of it and then you sort of use that class as you move forward. So since I'm going to need what's the frequency and what's the key and what's the value and all those things, well, what I can do is I can just create something called as node, a class called node, which can sort of take in those values. So my key is not going to just point to a simple value now. It should point to my node, which should contain all this information for me. So let's just quickly do that. Um, I'm just sort of declaring a constructor over here, which takes in the value, the frequency, and so on. And the frequency part is actually the main part for the LFU cache. Um, and the reason for that is pretty simple. If we, if we want the frequency or the number of times this particular item has been updated, well, we can just you know call frequency. So we don't need to maintain one more data structure to you know, get all those things. Uh, and obviously, since you're doing an LFU, one of the main attractions would be like, hey, I just want to use a simple dictionary. Probably I could just do a simple order dictionary and just move forward from there. Um, unfortunately, that would just complicate things for you. What you might want to do is you want to maintain an order dictionary which takes in um, the key as the minimum frequency that you're sort of going through. So think of it like this. So let me just give you an example. And we're going to take in the example that we sort of already discussed where you had a cache with the capacity of two and you have, you know, you've already placed in two values. So you have, I'm just going to call this cache. Um, and it has one and it has two. So this one needs to also update a count. So I'm just going to put brackets here. So the number of times it's been sort of called upon um, is one because, well, the get operation did one, right? But when you did this particular get operation, well, in that case, we need to update this to two. So the number of times one has been called is two, whereas the number of times two has been called is only one. So whenever you do another put over here, you need to fetch out that one value. So the way we're going to be like, the way we'll take care of that is just by maintaining a value inside our LFU cache object. So before I do that, let me just take in the capacity which is being passed in because that's really important. And the next value which I'm going to call is going to be called as minimum frequency, which is just going to be equal to none for now. Uh, the other things which I need is a simple dictionary. I'm just going to call it a dictionary for now. And yeah, actually let's call this cache because that will be a better word, which is going to be a simple dictionary, which is going to store in our key value pair. So it's like, it works at a complexity of O of one. And whenever I need to remove a value, I need that placement there. So I'm going to call something called as frequency node, which is also going to be a dictionary, which is going to take default dictionary with order dictionary passed in as the parameter. The simplicity over here is that whenever I take a dictionary, <clears throat> my understanding would be that I'm sort of placing in this counter value as the key and the value is going to be another dictionary, which is sort of going to like call upon all the next items. And that sort of sounds a little complicated, but it's really not. So just take my word for it for a minute. And as we sort of move forward with it, you'll sort of understand what I really meant with, you know, going through with this approach. So let's try implementing the get approach. So again, we're going to start with the base condition. Fortunately, we've been told that whenever there is no item or no key, which corresponds to whatever's there inside our cache, well, in that case, you need to return a one. So that's a base condition. So let's do that. Let's just do, oops return minus one and that's basically our base condition now the second thing that you want to do is you want to update the count right whatever is the frequency um, and before we sort of go into that i think we should sort of look at the put operation as well because they sort of go hand in hand right so let's start with a simple thing where we say that hey the base condition is that if capacity has been given as null value or zero or something just do a return yeah, because if the capacity is zero, you know, you can't do any inserts whatsoever. So just do a simple return. And so if the value is already there inside our cache, then that's the second base condition which we need to handle. Now, 
Ideally, what we want to do is, if you're doing a put operation on the same value over and over again, we don't want to, we don't want to like, you know, just update the frequency count. We want to also update the entire thing as well. So I know that doesn't make that much sense, but think of it like this. If you have one comma one and you're doing a put operation, that one comma one, the key value for one should ideally have a frequency count of two if it's already been inserted. So assuming that the get operation is sort of going to like update that thing for us, we can simply just update the cache value which is which is which is being given to us and then move forward from there. I know it sort of sounds complicated, but we'll get to that. So let me just do a simple pass over here. Um, actually a pass would make sense. Let me do a simple return. And this problem is a little difficult to explain like as you're sort of going through with it because there's a lot of handshake operations which is happening between the get and the put. Um, and you'll see that in a minute, but you'll have to bear with me for a little while. So we'll start with this very simplistic algorithm and then we'll sort of run our if conditions on top of that. So let's do, if we don't have anything inside our, if our cache is completely empty, nothing's there, then what do we do? Well, in that case, we just need to update the cache with the values, pretty straightforward. But you also want to make sure that inside that cache, you also have the frequency count. That is really, really important. So the way we can sort of do that is by leveraging the node class that we've sort of built out and sort of make an object. We just pass in the key, the value, and one for frequency. So whenever I sort of extract um, the key value, I will also have what frequency it's at, and that's that's actually the most important thing. We don't really need the key for now, but just so that this node op node object can be used everywhere else, we'll just give it that key value as well. And the other thing that we want to take care of is that we update the frequency node as well. So the frequency node is going to work as a data structure, which I saw already talked about, which is going to take in the key as, and actually let me just put this in comments so that we, we had that forever. So the key should be the count and the values should be the dictionary object. Yeah, cool. So taking that into consideration, if I do so, frequency node and I put one over here, well, in that case, what's going to happen is that this is going to be the minimum frequency that we've sort of presently at, and we're just updating our, our frequency node to take into that values as well. So since this thing is, the value is going to be an order dictionary as well, we can just simply paste in that value. So if I do key and then I do the same thing which we already have over here. So let me just copy paste this guy over here. You're basically done. You can, you can also copy paste this guy, but it's the same thing. Um, and again, the reason why this thing is going to help us out is because so frequency node is a dictionary where the key is going to be the count and the value is going to be the object or the node object which we have. And it's going to be a key value pair again. So the key is going to be the key which has been passed in. And then we sort of move forward from there. We also need to update the self minimum frequency. So we have the minimum that is there at this particular moment of time. This will help us whenever there's an overflow, it will help us evaluate and push out values in O of one. So we need to maintain that. So let's quickly do that. So, sorry, this should be a frequency and let's just make it one. So whenever there's a new, new value which is coming in, it will sort of come over here. Pretty straightforward so far. Um, let's sort of talk about what happens when there is an overflow. So overflow conditions is when capacity is going to be equal to whatever the length of the dictionary. So let's just check that really quick. So let's say if length of self dot cache is equal equal to self dot capacity, which is the capacity of our dictionary, then there is an overflow. The way we can sort of get this value out is pretty simplistic. We use the self minimum frequency value that we sort of sort of used, and we use the frequency node and pop out the first element which is there. Pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so let's just quickly do that. So we would have a key value and a node which is going to be popped out. Um, if you pop out of the frequency node, so let's just quickly do that. 
Um, and again, we're leveraging the minimum frequency so that we pop out the values which has been least frequently used. In Python, you can actually do pop item lost equal to false, which should ideally just pop out the value which was least recently used. Um, and that's just like one of the conditions which sort of talks about if there's a if there's a collision, if there are multiple items with the same count, which one do you pop? You pop out that value which had been inserted first. So pop item sort of does that for us. That's sort of a feature of like um, how your dictionaries would sort of help you evaluate and pop out the values. Um, and yeah, I think this should be good. So again, pop item is a, is a feature of order dictionary which pops out the last item. It's as simple as that. Uh, last item would be the least frequently used item. Awesome. So now all we need to do is, okay, so when you sort of pop this thing out, it's going to return the key value and the node which we which we sort of pasted in, which is this guy. And the node sort of helps us evaluate the key, but we already have the key. Now all we need to do is we just need to remove that value out of the dictionary. So let's just quickly do that. Let's do this and move the kth value from the dictionary, from our main cache. Rather. Yeah, um, cool. So we have the overflow condition already set. Uh, we'll try to see if this sort of throws any errors a little later, but I think that this should work fine. Um, and again, we're sort of going step by step to evaluate everything else. Um, now we sort of come to a condition where we've already inserted a value, but we need to sort of handle that case as well. So the only thing that we need to actually update is the value in that scenario. So if self.cache already has the key, then just update the value. So it's pretty straightforward. So you can just do self.cache key. And do remember over here that inside self.cache, you put in the node object. So the node object has multiple parameters. It has key, value, and frequency. So you just need to update the value. So we just do val, we do equal to value, and that's basically it. So you're just updating the value inside the cache. And also, this is basically like a get operation um, in a way because we need to sort of update the frequency as well. So we're going to make sure that that frequency update happens in get. But let's just go ahead and just call it with the same key. Again, um, if you don't understand why I'm doing this, it's just so that I'm just calling the update over and over again. Ideally, I should sort of make another function over here, but I feel like there's too much modularization already happening, so we'll take care of that later. Cool, so we are in a case where we sort of handle the put operations. The only thing that we need to take care of is inside the get, we need to update the frequency as well. That's something that we will take care of. Um, yeah, so the next thing that we want to do is that inside the get operation, we already handle the base condition, which is that hey, there's no key inside this cache, which is corresponding to the key, which has been passed in as the parameter. So, well, in that case, you return minus one. But if there is a key, then we can just fetch out that node value. So node is equal to self dot cache and just get this key. Again, node is the node object, which we saw stored inside our self dot cache key. Again, this was like a smart way of just handling and understanding what's the frequency of the value and then moving forward from there. Now, the reason why this thing is so cool is because I ideally have the node frequency or the number of times this thing has been called. Since I have that, I can sort of update my frequency node also simply just by updating that value. So since there's a get call happening over here, we need to update the frequency. So it needs to be first removed from the frequency node. So let's just quickly do that. Let's do self dot frequency node. The parameter, the key value, the first key value over here would be node dot frequency. And that's just because we're storing it as a frequency. So for this particular node, we know which frequency it's at or how many times it's been called. We query that particular value. And we also, inside that particular thing, we need to remove the key value or rather the, the default order dictionary, which is sort of corresponding to that key. Um, I hope that sort of makes sense. I can repeat that again. So it's just that inside self dot frequency node, which was a default dictionary with an order dictionary inside of it, um, you get the value with that particular frequency at which it's been called, and you remove that key. You just you just take it out. You just strip it out. 
Reason why we have to do that is just because there's going to be a new addition. So node.frequency plus one would be the new node that you would be sort of pasting inside. Pretty straightforward. Um, one thing which you might want to like take care of is that, hey, if there's an update which sort of happens over here, when you do the deletion, if the value, if the, if the structure does not have any more values, well, it's just lying there dormant, not doing anything. Um, this is not necessary, but I sort of like to take care of those scenarios. So we just do a simple check of whether frequency node has any more values inside of it. If it doesn't, then simply remove it. Pretty straightforward. Um, now we're sort of done with the frequency node part. We've cleared that area. Now the only thing that we want to do is that we want to update the node frequency. So we will talk about it for a while. So let's just quickly do that. Um, so do node frequency and do a simple increment. Now do the same, do the same update that we did before. So do serve frequency node, call node dot frequency, which has now been updated or incremented um, and pass in the key value and just pass in the node. So a node already has all the other details, which is the key, the value and the frequency. So just pass that in. Again, try to remember that inside the order dictionary, we've sort of already done this before, but we're passing these guys in. So right now, we sort of take a step back and try to evaluate what all have we done. So we've updated the frequency node, we've che checked for overflow conditions, sort of base conditions, sorry. Uh, we've sort of taken care of values which are say, staying dormant. The only thing that you want to actually take care of is that you want to update the minimum frequency. So take a step back. The only variable which was sort of helping us evaluate whenever there was an overflow of what's the minimum value which is presently there was minimum frequency, right? Um, now, the, it's a very simple way. We can just check that, hey, if not this thing, and I'm just going to copy paste that guy and just remove this thing and check for minimum frequency. So if there's no value inside self or minimum frequency, well, in that case, you've ideally just updated everything, right? And in that case, you just need to increment the minimum frequency as well. And after all these operations, all you need to do is, since this is sort of expecting an, an output, so you need to return the value, which is going to be node.val. So just return the value which corresponds to the key. Cool, um, I think that should actually do it. Um, let's just take a quick step back. Let's talk about the entire process one more time, summarize it, and then test our code. So the first thing that we did was we created our nodes data structure. And I know that this is, it's difficult to gain intuition on this, but when you feel like there's a lot of give and take happening and you want to maintain a lot of data, probably just keep it inside something called as node and just, you know, whenever that object sort of comes in, you can have all those details. Uh, we sort of declared four, uh, four attributes inside our class. One was capacity, which is the capacity of the cache. The minimum frequency is the minimum frequency being um, what the present minimum frequency that we presently add. Um, a cache, which is just a simple dictionary, which just does the key value pairs, or rather key node pairs, so that we inside the node we have values. Um, and a self.frequency node, which is basically a dictionary, which is, which has another dictionary inside of it, which works as an order dictionary. The key inside the frequency node, the reason why I've called it frequency node is because the first thing is going to be frequency. And the second thing is going to be the node at which it's going to point to. I know the, the name is sort of, it's, it's a little weird, but yeah, that's the reason why I call it frequency node. Um, so again, the key is going to be the frequency node is going to be the pointer at which it's sort of going to go. Yeah, <laughs> I should actually call it frequency key node, but let that be. Um, now let's start with the put operations. Um, and we'll try to evaluate whether there's, this is working off one complexity. If there are no for loops, I don't see any. Um, I think it should be working at O of 1, um, unless there's something happening internally. But yeah, so we start with the simple uh, problem statement, which says that, hey, if cell dot capacity does not have any value, if it's zero, if it's none, well, you just do a simple return. No put operations should be allowed in that case. That's the base condition. Um, the second condition that we sort of taken, which we sort of took care of was the overflow condition, which started that, which is basically that, hey, if length 
um, of the cache that we presently or which we presently add is equal to the capacity, then we need to pop out the value which is which was the least which was the least frequently used. And if we get the least frequently used, and there are a lot of maps over there, then get the least recently used. So we do that by leveraging the self minimum frequency variable. Pop the item which is the which is the first item inside our value, which was the least recently used item, and then just remove it from our cache. Straightforward, nothing too complicated there. Um, so I've missed through this thing. If the key already exists inside the cache, do remember that we are not updating the minimum frequency again, since we already done with that particular operation and that thing is already residing inside our cache, we just need to update the value. So we do that, we do self.cache key.val and we update it to value and then we call self.getKey so that our value gets updated accordingly. This entire get operation, we should sort of push all this data inside uh, an update or something so that we can call it and this operation of concern. That's bad coding practice from my side, um, but I don't want to complicate too many things since it's always so complicated. Um, the next thing is pretty simplistic. We've already sort of talked about it. It's just the intuition of handling node values um, and how you sort of do an insert. So inside self.cache key, you push in the node object and inside self frequency one of key, you paste in the node object. Again, the reason why we're using one over here is pretty simplistic. It's just that when you do a put operation, the first operation has already got a frequency of one. So you just update that value and just move forward from there. Um, then update the key value so it, it can correspond to the node object and update the minimum frequency to one. So those are our put operations, seems pretty realistic. The next thing is just inside the get operation, again, we start with the base condition, which is that, hey, if this thing does not exist inside the cache, return minus one. Uh, next thing is that just store the value of self.cache key um, to node. The reason why we sort of saving this inside is just so that we can perform node operation without having to call too many things. Um, and the first thing that we want to do is we want to remove the frequency node with the node.frequency that we presently add. This is just so that the, that data is no longer there and obviously we need to remove it um, and update it to a node frequency uh, to, or an increment of the node frequency that we presently add. So that's what's happening over here. Um, and yeah, there's just some cases that we're handling over here, which is just that, hey, frequency node, node.frequency does not really exist. Just chuck it out of the memory, don't need it anymore. Um, sort of works on no open because we're using dictionaries. Um, and the other thing is that, hey, if mil minimum frequency is not presently there, just update it to plus one or just node frequency is the same exact thing. Doesn't really matter. Um, and return node.val. Basically, that's it. So let's just go ahead and run this question. It's a pretty long problem. Um, I guess there's a reason why Google asks it. Uh, but cool, you can see that's running fine. Um, you can sort of pause this video and check out the thing and how it's working. Um, I don't want to go through it again. Um, it's difficult to map out, but let's just go ahead and submit it. Uh, you can see I sort of faced a lot of problems with like wrong answers and runtime errors. But yeah, fortunately, this thing worked. Phew. Uh, yeah, um, it's not the most faster solution. It's doing above average. So 72% is pretty cool. Um, memory wise, not that great primarily due to the fact that we've been using so many cache and frequency nodes and so much other stuff. Probably that's what's killing the memory usage. Um, but since there was no restriction going over there, we are good overall. Um, cool. So again, uh, a few takeaways from this problem is that whenever you sort of like work around with least recently used cache and a few caches, first thing that you probably want to talk about with the interviewer is what all techniques that you can use. Obviously, if the interviewer says that, hey, you can't use any libraries, well, this order dictionary sort of goes out of the loop, but you can, sort of all, you can still implement your own order dictionary, which I sort of urge you to do. It's pretty straightforward. It's just like a doubly linked list, which sort of works out, which also has a hash map pointing to everything else. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look at the LRU cache video, you'll probably get it. Um, that's the first thing that you want to do. The second thing that you probably want to like take care of is that the reason why this solution has so many variables and so many you know handshake operations going on is just because there is a time complexity which has been given over here. If they, if they told us the port operations could be what O of N or something, well, we would have been, it would have been easier for us because whenever you would do a port, you could just update the values as you sort of move forward. Um, but the 
third intuition which I sort of want to sort of urge all of you to you know take care of is that whenever somebody gives you a problem just take a step back look at the problem try to see if there is a way that you can sort of use some layer structure or some uh, oop paradigm in order for you to solve it I do understand that this thing it, it sort of took me a lot of time to sort of understand it as well but um, after I sort of, you know, built all these guys out, I sort of realized that this thing needs to be built out. So as you sort of go with the problem, you sort of get it. So you can update that as you move along, but that's completely fine. Um, and yeah, and just like learn to leverage how caches work and try to be quick with how you want to update frequency nodes. And that's basically it. Not that complicated of a problem. I think it's sort of related to how you sort of divide and, you know, Conquer all your sub problems as you're moving forward with it, but yeah, that's basically it. Cool. So thank you so much for watching this video. I, I really appreciate it. If you did like this video, do give a like and do subscribe to our channel. We are a discussion over here, and we would love to have you on board with us. And again, you're awesome. We all know it, and have an awesome day. Thank you so much.